Hi online family, Maddie here. We're here at church getting ready for Sunday and I'm so excited that you're a part of this message. We're a church that loves God, loves people and loves life. And I'm praying that this message is gonna speak to you, it's gonna inspire you and uplift you in your journey in life. So why don't you go ahead and share it with someone in your world and let's be all a part of what God is doing together. Well, happy Mother's Day. To everyone in the house today, it's a special, special Sunday. It's great to see everyone. I just wanted to take a moment, and um, I really need to do this because, you know, Jill is such an amazing wife, but she's an incredible mom. And so I just wanted to take a moment right now and honor the mother of, the, of our house, of the house as well. Um, I like to call her the first lady of Colonial. And, um, but she's super, super special, and so, um, babe, we love you. I wanted to give you a gift, so Timmy, could I, could I grab that gift? Babe, could you come up here? Could you welcome Jill as she comes up? I grew these for the last year. It's in our side yard. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks, baby. And I think we wanted to, to honor on. Yes. And um, I wanted to give something to, we wanted to give something to, <laughs> to Jill's mum, Phyllis. So Phyllis, could you come up here as well? We've got something for you. Here you go, come, come get your flowers. Oh, I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Love you. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, it's just it's good to celebrate the mums, hey? Online, hope you're all celebrating with your mum as well right now. Pretty exciting. Big warm welcome to anyone new or visiting our church today. We are grateful that you'd come and be a part of what's happening, and um, yeah, maybe, maybe you know, you might come back next week and see what's happening. We have um, loads of different things to get involved in in our church. Um, obviously, the most important thing about our church you need to know is we love Jesus here, and that's pretty much the beginning and the end of it. So beyond that, though, there are other things. So uh, this Thursday, apparently, we're throwing some axes at Grill and Chill, so if you're a guy and you're new and just want to do something fun and meet some guys, come on out to Grill and Chill on Thursday night. But there's lots of different things that are available in our church. Um, we believe that church is not just a Sunday thing, but it's a Monday through Sunday thing. And um, yes, we come together today, but we want to do life together. And so that's the whole point of church is we do church, but we are the church. Amen? Awesome. Well, hey, uh, if you've got your Bibles, why don't you open with me to Luke chapter 2. I want to preach a message specifically on Mother's Day for our church. We're going to take a little pause in our series, Rabbi. And I want to speak a message specifically for Mother's Day. And I really believe this message is for everyone. Um, I'm excited about it because I believe there are things that God's going to show us in His Word like He always does that are going to help us. But in Luke chapter 2... There's this um, sequence that happens. Jesus is dedicated as a, as a baby at the temple. And then at the age of 12, in Luke chapter 2, he goes with his parents. His parents take him to the Passover festival in Jerusalem. And this is a big, big deal. At the age of 12, what happens with um, Jewish boys is they're considered at that point ready for the commandments. A Jewish boy at the age of 12 is ready for the commandments. They call them sons of the law. And that's the time that they're able to fulfill the commandments and understand them and live by them. And so this wasn't just like, a, hey, there's this thing happening up in Jerusalem. We're just going to go and check it out. Like it's not like it's going to a concert. This was actually like a big, big deal. It would have involved family, multiple layers of family. Um, and it's a pretty special time. And so we're going to pick it up here in Luke chapter 2. And I'm going to be reading from the Message Translation. Verse 41 says, Every year Jesus' parents went to worship at Jerusalem during the Passover festival. When Jesus turned 12, his parents took him to Jerusalem to observe the Passover, as was their custom. Verse 43, a full day after they began their journey home, Joseph and Mary realized that Jesus was missing. They'd assumed that he was somewhere in their entourage, 
but he was nowhere to be, fr- to be found. After a frantic search among relatives and friends, Mary and Joseph returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After being separated from him for three days, they finally found him in the temple, sitting among the Jewish teachers, listening to them and asking them probing questions. All who heard Jesus speak were awestruck at his intelligent understanding of all that was being discussed at his wise answers to their questions. His parents were shocked to find him there, and Mary scolded him, saying, Son, your father and I have searched for you everywhere. We have been worried sick over not finding you. Why would you do this to us? And Jesus said to them, Why do you need to search for me? Didn't you know that it was necessary for me to be here in my father's house? consumed with him. Mary and Joseph didn't fully understand what Jesus meant. Jesus went back home with them to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured Jesus' words deeply in her heart. There's something special for all the mothers today. Treasured Jesus' words. Verse 52, as Jesus grew, so did his wisdom and maturity. The favor of men increased upon his life, for he was greatly loved by God. What a cool story. I want to preach a message today on Mother's Day called The Beating Heart of a Mum. Come on, write it down. The Beating Heart of a Mum or the Mother's Beating Heart today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word today. God, we're grateful for all the mums today. Father, we thank you that mothers, no matter where, what, what stage or where mothers are at, we thank you, Father, that the mother's heart is active, alive. It's working in your people. Father, thank you that you've put the heart of a mother, into so many here today, God. So, Father, we speak blessing. We pray blessing. We thank you that you're raising up mums, spiritual mums. Father, we pray for all the mums to come, Lord, that are going to enter into this beautiful journey called motherhood. And, Father, we thank you for everything you're doing in our house, Lord. We thank you for all colonial kids as well, in Jesus' name. And we all said together, amen. A mother's beating heart. Verse 43, a full day after they began their journey home, Joseph and Mary realized that Jesus was missing. (laughs) They had assumed he was somewhere in their entourage, but he was nowhere to be found. After a frantic search among relatives and friends, Mary and Joseph returned to Jerusalem. Think about Mary's heart rate in that moment. (laughs) I remember one time I took all of my kids, I don't know, I was just having a bad day mentally, I think. I took all of my kids to Alvin's Island (laughs) by myself. You know, you look back on stupid things you did in your life. I don't know where Jill was. Guess I was on my own. I thought it was a good idea. I was like, yeah, I can do this. (laughs) And I walk in with my three kids. In fact, I think I had one of their friends with them as well, which makes it even worse. And we walk in the front door, and it was actually the first time I'd ever been in there. (laughs) It's just layer upon layer of stupidity. (laughs) Didn't have a mental map of anything. Didn't know where the fire exits were. Didn't know anything was going on. And I walk in, and I'm not kidding, within about 15 seconds, I'd lost all three of my children. And if you've been in there, you know, it's like a thick jungle of T-shirts in Alvin's Island. And it's like they put the racks higher or something just to make it more like a jungle. It's easy to hide in there. But my heart rate just went up quickly. There are other people in there, strangers obviously in the store, never been in there before, it was a big space, I mean the doors, you can just walk out, I got like a three, a five and a seven year old and I'm freaking out in Alvin's Island. (laughs) But I just think, I can only imagine right here in this moment in the text, the stress and the heart rate of Mary, oh my gosh, where is Jesus Her heart rate would have gone like crazy. She had a beating heart in that moment. But here's the truth today. She had a beating heart for her son. She had a beating heart for Jesus, her son. 
So today, because it's Mother's Day, I just wanted to talk about the beating heart of a mum for a moment and just have a bit of fun and just celebrate mums for a moment and just draw on this text. But I wanted to give us three beating hearts of every mum. <laughs> three beating hearts of every mum. And if you're in here today and this reminds you of your mum, makes you think of your mum and you know, maybe your mum's not here anymore, but maybe it'll, it'll give you a moment just to reflect fondly on your mum. But I think it's always a good time when we remember the impact of a mother in our lives and how powerful it is and how God-given it is. So the first beating heart of a mum is this, ready? Mothers have a heart that beats to care. Looking at this text, Mothers have a, have a heartbeat that cares. Her first reaction was to care for her son. She wasn't thinking, I've lost Jesus, the son of God. Her first instinct in that moment was, I've lost my boy. This is my son. Where is he at? She had a heartbeat that cared. She was thinking, where is he? Where is my child? A wise man once said, never be get between a mother and her kids. Never get between a mother and her kids. I love the Passion Translation here, which shows the sentiment of Mary. So catch this real quick. Everyone, when she goes back to Jerusalem, everyone is blown away by the intelligent questions. Everyone is blown away by the aptitude of young 12-year-old Jesus. Everyone is just like, wow, this guy's amazing. He's like, he's so young, but he's got so much knowledge. He's asking these incredible questions. You know, they didn't know who he was, but, G uh, but Mary knew exactly who he was. But I just love what happens here. Verse 47, all who heard Jesus speak were awestruck at his intelligent understanding of all that was being discussed. And his wise answers to their questions. Now listen to the way that mom is blown away. And Mary scolded him saying, son. I love it when Jill gets onto our kids. That's, that's the go-to. That's the indicator right there. When she, when she says son to my boys, game on. I'm sitting back with popcorn. I'm enjoying this moment. Look at what she says. She says, son, your father and I have searched. That's another one. Your father and I. If that gets included, it's a bad situation for you. I have searched everywhere. We have been worried sick over not finding you. She cared. Why would you do this to us? I remember when I was about 16 years of age, Loved my mom. She was incredible. She just, she had a fiery passion for her kids as well. And man, I remember one time at the age of 16, um, and I think she felt sorry for me because I wanted to go hang out with my friends and I had my, my permit to drive, my license to drive at that point. I didn't have a car. And so she said to me, she was like, I think she had a weak moment. She was like, okay, you can take my car. She said, you can take my car to go hang out with your friends. Don't be home too late. And so I take her car and I go and I'm just having best time with my friends and it comes time to go home. I think it was like about 10 o'clock. It's dark, definitely. And I'm heading home in mum's nice car. And I have a full on accident. Like, I mean, like front end, the whole one side of the car smashed out, just wasn't paying attention. Just, just a 16 year old kid that we all fear. We just don't want that to happen. But I just haven't been driving very long. And so I had an accident. But by the time I get the car home, because it was still kind of drivable, <laughs> I finally get the car home and it's nearly midnight. And again, remember I'm 16, my brain's not fully developed yet. <laughs> I'm freaking out, I'm like, man, she's going to kill me. Mom, like, she is going to go completely crazy. But I also know mom doesn't like to be woken up. And I don't want to wake her up, so I'm being caring towards her if I just let her sleep. So I went right to bed. In fact, I had a great night's sleep. I mean, I, I was on an emotional high anyway. You know, stress levels were high. I needed to get some rest. I woke up the next morning to my own shoes being thrown at me. I will never forget that scene. 
It was like something out of law and order, like the murder part. I was just like, this is freaking crazy right now. I remember I woke up to my mum throwing my own shoes at me as I'm waking up. What a way to wake up! And she was fired up and, man, she was just... But, you know, she wasn't upset about the car. She was upset that something had happened to me and she was asleep. See, a mother, it's inbuilt in mums to care. A mother has a heartbeat to care. A mother has a heartbeat to care for what's hers, what's been entrusted to her. And what are we celebrating on Mother's Day? We're celebrating the caring heart of a mum. And it's beautiful, and we see it right here in the text, is Mary's not freaking out about the fact that, you know, reputation might look a certain way because she doesn't have her kids with her. She's not worried about necessarily other things that are happening. She's not worried about the itinerary or the transport situation, whether on camels or something. I don't know. She was worried about her son, where he was, his welfare. Mothers have a heartbeat to care And it's beautiful. She wasn't mad at the situation. She was mad at the fact that she didn't know where her son was. I wanted to give in each one of these points a pro tip for anyone when it comes to their mum. Okay, here's pro tip number one. You ready? Call your (laughs) mum. Inside of these three points is going to be a pro tip. You know, at Home Depot, they give you pro tips. This one is a pro tip for you. Call your mum because she cares about you. Call her, text her. She wants to hear from you. She cares that you are okay. She loves to hear from you. It makes her beating heart glad to know you're doing okay. You know that? She's not concerned about the thing you did. She's not concerned about the way you acted that time. Big picture, she's not upset about that. She just cares about you. So call her. Send her a text. Nothing does a mother's heart more glad than a call or a text. Can I get an amen, a hearty amen on a Sunday morning? Because it's true. Moms have a beating heart that cares. So that's number one. Number two, the next beating heart of a mother, and we see it here in Mary, is this, a heart that beats to nurture. Verse 51, Jesus went back home with them to Nazareth, And was obedient to them. His mother treasured Jesus' words deeply in her heart. And verse 52, as Jesus grew, so did his wisdom and maturity. The favor of men increased upon his life, for he was greatly loved by God. It's the nature of a mother to nurture. To nurture. Now think about that for a moment. In our culture, sometimes we think of nurture as like coddling. As this like, oh, making it easy. I'm just going to nurture. I'm just going to make things easy. It's actually not that. That's not what this word means. Nurture is different. To nurture means to feed, to protect. But it's also to support and encourage as during the period of training and development. To bring up, to train, to educate. This is another, another way to describe that I really like is to promote development. Your mom was put into your life by God to help develop you, to promote the development in your life. And we see that right here, that he grew in a certain stature. He grew and became what God had intended for him to be under the obedience and inside the covering of Mary and his dad. We read about the Proverbs 31 woman this morning, which Jill has already touched on, but in the In the uh, Passion Translation in verse 14, it says, She delights in the work of her hands. Look at this. She gives out revelation truth to feed others. Revelation truth to feed others. Mothers have the God-given ability to feed and nourish both naturally and spiritually. That's the beauty of motherhood. That's the beauty of what God intends to express through mothers. They have the ability, and I'm grateful for it, the ability to speak revelation truth, to nourish and to feed through words. I still remember a time in in, in my life with my mom where she just said to me, she said, you'd never met a stranger to me. And I was just like, what? Where'd that come from? It's like, you never met a stranger. 
You become friends with people instantly. And I was just like, okay, where did that come from? What, what's the deal, mom? She's like, no, that's just, that's just you. But she spoke something over me. And it was words that fed and nourished me. It's the heartbeat of God to express that through mothers. They have a heartbeat that wants to nurture, a heartbeat that wants to promote, a heartbeat that wants to develop and to do good. Your mom wants you to do good. I also love the fact that mums also know about all the extra things that are needed. I've learned this when it comes to going to the beach. So when Jill and I in the morning, we have our coffee, we talk, you know, we pray, we have our quiet time and we decide what we're going to do. And if it's the beach, I'm like, okay, cool, let's go to the beach. I walk into the room, get my uh, board shorts on, I come back out with a towel, I'm like, cool, I'm ready to go to the beach. (laughs) How many people know in here that no one is ready to go to the beach at that point? (laughs) And I've learned, man, there is a system, there is things that are needed There are layers to this. If it's going to be a successful time at the beach, you've got to be prepared. But ultimately, it's because so everyone can have a good time. Everyone can enjoy it. Everyone can can get the most out of it. I love that nature when it comes to mom. They seek to empower. They seek to promote growth. They seek to see their kids um, naturally and spiritually do better. And I love that. A mother's heart for you is that you'd grow and you'd do better and you'd see God's potential fulfilled in your life. See, the natural food is supplied. Yes, that's what the the proverb is saying. But the nature of the beating heart of a mum is to nourish and to promote spiritual growth as well. It goes on to say that Jesus grew in wisdom, grew in The living out of wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge in our lives. How did Jesus get that? He got that from his mother as well as his father. See, that's the heartbeat today that we celebrate on Mother's Day is the heartbeat of nature. Just one commentary that I loved on this particular passage because from chapter 1, 2, and 3, we see a big change. So um, first of all, Jesus is, is dedicated as a baby. And then um, he gets uh, lost and found at the temple. And then pretty quickly, we just see in Luke chapter 3, Jesus is with um, the prophet John getting baptized. Listen to this. It says, we know virtually nothing about the 18 years between Luke 2 and Luke 3. When Jesus went to the Jordan to be baptized by the prophet John, we know he grew in favor with God and man He served his earthly mother and father and his father in a carpenter's shop. It is likely that Joseph, Jesus' earthly father, died during this season of his life. And that left Jesus with the responsibility as the firstborn to provide for his family. And that means to look after his mother and to spend time with his mother and be nurtured by his mother, i.e. promoted, developed, grown. And it's beautiful and I love it. So... Some beating hearts of a mom. The first is to care. The second is to nurture, to promote, to develop, both naturally and spiritually. And number three, team, you can come back up. The beating heart of a mom is a beating heart to love. At the end of the day, no matter what you've done, no matter what the situation is, no matter how many cars you've smashed, the beating heart of a mom is to love and to keep on loving. I've watched it with Jill. I've watched it with Jill's mom. I've watched it with my mom. It doesn't matter necessarily how bad the behavior gets. The loving never stops. Can I get an amen? Verse 51, Jesus went back home. And I love this. It says that he was obedient to them. So he was submissive. Another translation says he was submissive to his parents. Submissive to his mom. And it says his mother treasured Jesus' words deeply in her heart. The treasure that Mary had was the treasury of love that she had for her world, for her son, for her family, for her kin, for her people. She treasured Jesus' words. She treasured her son. She treasured, she had love. You know, the thing that you treasure the most is what you love. The thing that you treasure deeply on the inside, it's what you love the most. So I wanted to give us a, 
I, did, I forgot the pro tip from point number two. That was like the best part of the message. Can I give it to you real quick? Number two, a heart that beats to nurture. The pro tip there is thank and encourage your mom. Because she's, she's encouraging and she's promoting you, but you need to encourage her. When, when a mom gets encouragement from a son or a daughter, it's like cool water washing over her soul. Let's be people when it comes to mums because they do so much, they sacrifice so much, they go so far for us. Let's be people that flow the encouragement back to our mums and be people that speak words of life over her. Tell her she's doing a good job. Maybe you've never in decades ever told your mum she did a good job. Maybe today's the day. Thank and encourage your mum because it's built in her to nurture you. And I believe she would love to hear that she's done a good job. And I guess I'll give you the third pro tip with this is simply this. Show your mum some love. Because here's the truth. When you think about it, she first loved you. Before you felt the capacity to love, before you felt the ability, had the words even to speak in love, she was already loving you. So let's be people that love our mums in Jesus' name. Would you stand with me? I want to set aside just a little bit of time to pray. Because... Well, we do everything we can here at church to make the special days special, like Mother's Day. Today could be a hard day. Today today could be a day where actually a bit of reflection could cause a little bit of angst, a little bit of pain even. But here's the truth, is God loves you and He cares about your pain. He cares about the things you've gone through. He cares about maybe that area of your life that's been a struggle. Maybe that's an area of your life where you walk in today like, oh, Mother's Day is actually kind of a tough day for me. First of all, I just want to say, bless you because you're here. That you had the courage to come. That's powerful. And God will bless that. But I also want to take a moment right now to pray for some mums. I want to pray for mums that, man, your season of maybe having kids in the house, that's over. I want to pray for this season you're in, maybe some moments that you might get with your children still or maybe grandchildren. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for spiritual mums that are beginning to be birthed in our house and in the journey. I think we need spiritual mums more than ever right now to speak truth, to speak encouragement, to show grace and to to love and to nurture and to care. And then I also want to pray specifically for mums to be. Maybe you're in here today and you're like, man, that's a head for me. That's, a, that's something that I want. That's something that I see for my life. That's a dream in my heart. I want to pray over you as well. So with every head bowed and eyes closed. Yeah, why don't we start there? If you believe in that motherhood's ahead for you, if you believe in that motherhood is something that's ahead in your journey, maybe it's a dream in your heart. Maybe it's something that hasn't been fulfilled, but you've been longing for it for a while. I want to pray over you. Come on, you just raise up your hand. No one's looking around. And if you're with your spouse, I just want you to you know, hold their hand as well. We're going to believe together. We're going to pray and we're going to believe together that God's going to give you the grace and the courage to walk out this season. But he's also going to remind you right now in this moment through the power of your Holy Spirit, the promise he has for you, the promise that, that children are coming, that he's going to bless your offspring despite maybe circumstance and things that are surrounding you. So God, you see the hands that are raised. God, we speak your blessing over people, God. We know it's your will, Father, to bless your people. From the top of people's heads to the bottom of their feet, God. So, Father, we pray in this specific area of families, as people are opening up their hearts and crying out to you to have children, God, we, we thank you, Father, that children are coming. God, we prophesy and we speak right now, families growing in our church, Lord. Father, we just ask that you would bring about at the perfect time, Lord, children, into people's lives. God, we, we pray right now specifically over people that are trying to get pregnant, families that are trying to uh, uh, start families, God, and to have more children. God, I just pray right now that you would do a miracle, Lord, in people's families, that you would remind people right now through the power of your Holy Spirit, the truth and the promise that you've spoken over your people, Lord, 
to raise up families and to bring children into the world. Father, we just thank you that this time next year there's going to be kids that weren't here now. Father, we thank you right now for the truth and the promises that are in your word that we can stand on today, Lord. We speak children into people's futures right now. God, I pray right now for spiritual mums in the house. Lord, I pray right now that you're raising up spiritual mums in our church. Father, spiritual mums are going to do just like what Mary did for Jesus, to care and to promote and to, to protect and to nurture, Lord, and to speak nourishing words of your truth over spiritual children right now, God. Father, we thank you for spiritual mums, Lord. Father, I pray that you would raise them up, Lord, that there would be prophetic words spoken over them, that they would know this is their place, that they would step into it. And Holy Spirit, that you would give them the strength and the courage to speak and to nurture and to love and to care. and Do what spiritual mums do. In Jesus' name. And God, we pray over the mums right now. Father, we thank you for strength and we thank you for grace. And God, we come against any lie of the enemy right now that would try to sow a seed of doubt in a mum that they're not good enough or they don't have what it takes. Father, we thank you that in Jesus they have everything that they need. And so God, I pray through the power of your Holy Spirit that your grace would rest upon mums right now. That in the busiest of busy seasons, Lord, that there would just be a grace that flows over mums. Lord, to do all the things that need to be done, all the planning, all the prep. Uh, preparing God to speak the words that need to be spoken in the moments when there are moments where they feel like they're not enough. Father, I just pray right now through the power of the Holy Spirit that you would just implant that moment knowing full well that they are enough and they have what it takes in Jesus' name. So much better His way. We can spend most of our lives trying to figure out how to do it our way. You know, and trying to figure out how to put our spin on it and not really want to lean into the arms of a God who's given us grace to do it his way. And that message was so powerful, hearing about the heart of a mother, the beating heart of a mother who cares and who nurtures and who loves. But you know who gave the, the mother that heart? It's a God. In Genesis, the Bible tells us God created us in his own image. So it is our Father's heart. He's given to us. And everything about the mother tells us everything about the God that we serve. He loves you. He wants to nurture you through the mothers that he's put in your world. Maybe you don't have a mom here on the earth anymore. Maybe you don't have a mom in your world, but he's put women in your life to nurture you and to care for you and to love you. And he's expressing himself through his people as he always does. So everything that you've heard this morning, I want you to understand is just the message of God's love for you. Every part of a mother that brings us alive and helps us to become the people that we're supposed to be is God speaking through a mother to lift you up, to lift your eyes towards him, to see that you are called and you are chosen and that you are loved and he has so much ahead of you. And sometimes we just need to realize the easiest thing to do is the one thing that he's asked us to do, which is to turn our eyes to him and say, yes, your way is better than my way. I can't get to you on my own. It was only through your son, Jesus, that I could have life. And so this morning, we never want a Sunday to pass without offering you the invitation that he offered to us, the same invitation that I said yes to which was that Jesus died for me on a cross and he was enough to have, for me to have union with the Father. He was enough to become the way, the truth, and the life. And all he says is that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you will be saved. And that is the invitation that we're offering this morning. If you're lacking knowing nurture and love and care, do you know where you find it? In our, in our holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's where you find it. And so we're going to close our eyes all around the room just to give some privacy. And I want to invite you to say yes to him and to put him first in your life and to trust him with everything that you have. So I'm going to count to three. And on the count of three, if that's you, why don't you just raise your hands and say yes to Jesus this morning.
one, he loves you more than you could possibly imagine and you can't earn it. It's given in his beautiful grace. Two, Jesus died for you. He would have died just for you. But there are people all around the earth and in this room whose lives have been eternally changed and whose hearts have come alive when they said yes to him. And three, if that's you, would you just lift up your hands? It's awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. You are loved, and he wants to nurture you as you say yes to him and care for you. If there's anybody else, just stick your hand up. Awesome. We're going to do what we do every week, which is just take a moment and pray together. Because when you say yes to God, you're saying yes to the family of God. And it means that you're not going to say this prayer alone. And we're welcoming you into the family, and we're going to do it together. So thank you, Jesus, that you love me. Thank you that you died for me and that you rose again. I confess with my mouth, and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and is risen from the dead. I want to be a Christian, have first place in my life, oh God. I give you everything that I have, and I trust you for all my days. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate. It's awesome. Awesome. Hey, we celebrate because the Bible tells us that when one person says yes, there's a party that goes on in heaven. If it was just you today, all across the earth, there are, is a rejoicing sound. I mean, like, if you've ever tried to imagine what heaven sounds like rejoicing, I like, <laughs> it makes me, like, overexcited. Because I just can't imagine what heaven rejoicing would sound like, but I know that the Bible tells us t- today Heaven is rejoicing over you. So I'm rejoicing with you and so are all of us. And what we want to do is we have these New Believers Bibles. If you if you just don't have a Bible, by the way, you can always get one of these. They're just a gift from us to you. You can just pick one up. But if you said yes to Jesus today, step one is pick up a Bible. If you want to know more about who Jesus is and what he says about you and how life looks when you're following Jesus, everything you need is in this book right? This is God's word to us. This is how he speaks to us primarily now, today. It's through his word. Um, And so we want to connect you by getting you a Bible, but also we just love to say hello and just let you know we're here for you, okay? It's not creepy. We're not going to like send you text messages every day. We just don't want you to go through this alone. And so we would love to walk alongside you on this journey. Um, So you can pick those up in the lobby. And then is there anything else? Except for thanks, babe. That was a beautiful message. (laughs) I'm so thankful for a husband who champions women and um, who champions the heart of a mother. So I'm really looking forward to all the amazing things you have planned for me after church. (laughs) I can't imagine. There must be so many presents waiting at home. (laughs) Oh, that's all. It's good to have fun in church, right? Like, God likes his children running around and having fun and laughing in the house. Like, who wouldn't? What parent doesn't? So, yeah, that was awesome, babe. Thank you. All right, let's pray, and then you guys can head out. Enjoy your Mother's Day. God, thank you so much for your house. Thank you that we get to be in your house and we get to experience who you are, Father. Let it go so deeply into everything that we are this morning, that we walk out and our week looks different, God. Give us clarity and wisdom to navigate the life that we're living. Father, we give you everything we have. You are our first priority. You get first place in our life, Jesus. Teach us how to obey you, to love you, and to enjoy this life exceedingly, abundantly more than we could possibly have even asked or imagined as we love you and we serve you, God. Um, God, would you just pour out joy over your house this week? God, would you just bring new new rivers of joy, God, like we've never known before? God, help our eyes to be open to how you're moving in our world, God. Help us to see where you are. And God, I just speak joy over this room for this week, God, overflowing and abundant. It's your holy name we pray, Jesus. Amen. All right, we love you, church.